Hello all. We are now in yet another session of bioinformatics for schoolers. And in today's session, we'll discuss about protein database and resources. I'm sure that by now you are well aware of the central dogma procedure where the information in DNA gets transcribed to RNA, then to protein, whereby different proteins are formed to perform different functions. Also, by now you would be aware of the genetic code and how different codons code for different proteins. And also in the previous lecture, you, you have seen now what are the different kind of structure of proteins and how they have impact on our daily life. So just to give a quick flashback, now you know that the proteins are formed of peptides, where peptides in turn are made up of amino acid sequence which are present like beads in a chain. So you know now that we have naturally occurring 20 amino acids, which forms peptides, then forms proteins. So you would be thinking why proteins are a kind of a big deal or why are they important? Yes, they are very important because they are found in almost all the pathways that's happening in our body. They act as transport molecules, they are important for the structural mechanisms in cells, tissues, and all other parts in our body. They act as enzymes. They are also involved in protection of body by uh, form of uh, antibodies and other immunological molecules. Also, your cells are making proteins all the time. And at the time when you're watching this video, also your cells are making proteins. So proteins are hence very important. So structure has an important role in function. From the previous lecture, you have learned already about different structure of proteins. You have the primary structure where you can see uh, the amino acids are in sequential order. And in the secondary structure, it forms different shapes. You can see a helical shape here. And in the tertiary structure, you have a three dimensional folding of it. And in quaternary structure, you have more folding with aggregation of more uh, polypeptide chains. Also, there are some parts like domain. These domains are actually formed due to the folding. There are several regions in the proteins that is formed. And this domain in this uh, 3D structure, you can see uh, the uh, parts with red color spheres, which are domain. And this could have different uh, specific functions, like they could act as receptor, epitope, etc. So now you are clear about the primary structure, where, as I have told you before, the amino acid sequences are, are arranged like beads in a chain. Now you can see here a main chain, and in which the amino acids are arranged as small beads. If you see the chemical structure of it, in the blue color, you can see it as a main chain and in green color, the side chains, uh, which represents different amino acids like uh, histidine, methionine, glutamine, cysteine. So now we have seen the structure of the amino acids and how proteins are formed. And it's also important how these amino acid sequences are arranged. It's not like you make any of the arrangements and the protein becomes functional. There should be a specific arrangement of amino acids to give meaningful proteins by which they can perform their function. You can compare it with a dictionary where we have around 26 alphabets in English. And it's not like we mix any alphabets, we get a meaningful word. For example, if we take an example like interest, when we write these alphabets in a specific manner, we have a meaningful word. But if you don't, as you have see, can see here with the cross marks, it doesn't make a meaningful word. Same thing happens to the amino acids when it's not arranged in a proper manner, the resulting proteins does not function properly. We could see this by taking an example of human hemoglobin protein. As you all know, hemoglobin protein is a transport protein which transports oxygen in red blood cells. So when we see the human hemoglobin protein and if you see the amino acid sequence of it, you can see a long sequence with different amino acids arranged in a specific manner, which makes it functional. And when there is any change in the order of these amino acids, it creates a problem there. 
For example, if in this sequence, the glutamic acid is converted into valine instead of glutamic acid, if a person is having valine amino acid there, this protein becomes non-functional. Uh, like we have seen in the previous slide, it becomes a non-meaningful uh, word like that. It becomes a non-functional protein. And there is a disease called sickle cell anemia where uh, the change in such uh, amino acids result in the patient's blood uh, RBC, the red blood cell, to form like a sickle shape when compared to the normal RBC and which uh, result in non-proper uh, transport of oxygen in these kind of people. So now you are already clear about the primary structure of uh, the protein and how the amino acid sequences are arranged like a beads in a chain by using covalent bond which is also called as a peptide bond. So we have now sequences of proteins. Now it's very important to have something kind of a database or a reference library to see uh, where we can compare a reference protein sequences which what protein sequences what we have. For example, if few groups are uh, sequencing some proteins and they want to compare it with a reference to make sure that the protein that they found have been already reported or if there is any change in the reference protein compared to the protein that they found. For all these, we, we require uh, a database or a resource of protein sequences. For this, when we check the history of this, we have uh, a chemist called Margaret Dehoff from Georgetown University in USA. Actually, she started collecting protein sequences reported by several research groups and compiled in a book which was named as Atlas of Protein Sequence. And there were several volumes of this book at that time. After which, a few other groups started recording this information to data sets and then to databases like we are what we are having now. Because this kind of work is kind of manual work. And now by using uh, the uh, computer and uh, the modern technology, we could have all these information as data sets and uh, databases as you have already seen for uh, the genome database uh, discussed in previous lectures. So for protein database, there were several databases that they have uh, started from different uh, institutions like export, Munich Information Center for Protein Sequences, NCBI Protein Database, then PIR Protein Information Resource from Georgetown University, then Protein Information Resource, then Swiss Prot, which is one of the uh, renowned ones from Swiss Insta Institute of Bioinformatics. So later what happened was, uh, for example, for Swiss Prot, uh, they had two kinds of information. One information from the protein sequences that different groups have found, and other from the DNA, they used to translate uh, the DNA sequence to protein, and they used to keep as one of the resource. And over the time, these resources were compiled uh, to consortium like Uniprot. And Uniprot is one of the widely used database for protein, and we would be discussing it in the future slides. So let's try an example now. For example, I want to check about amylase protein. As you all know, amylase protein is one of the protein involved in digestion. So what I do is I go to Google and I <coughs> type there Uniprot. And in the Google search, you can see Uniprot as the first result that's coming. Then once you select the Uniprot, you see this kind of window that's open. And here now you will enter amylase. And then you press search button. Once you press search button, you find this view where they ask whether you want the results to be viewed in card format or table format. This you could select based upon your uh, interest, but I usually select a table view because it's more clear for me. So once you can select the table view, then you again press view result and you get some results like this. So in this, you can see all the amylase now, and here you can see the amylase from human being and with 511 amino acid. And usually you select the first one that belongs to the human being, and then you get a screen like this. 
where it shows all details about amylase protein, the protein name, the gene from which it is formed, and what's the function. Then you have all other sections like name and taxonomy, the location, the, the disease reported for this, the expression, the interaction, the structure. So for us, what's more important is the sequence first. So we press the sequence, which is shown here. And you see a window like this open with all the amino acid sequences that is mentioned here. Now you could download the sequence or copy this sequence. You can go to the download button there and you could <coughs> you could download the sequence into a text file and you could save it in your computer. You could also directly copy from there and paste it wherever you want, like in a word file. This is possible. And the next thing that we could discuss is the structure. You go in the same place and then click structure here. Then you could see the structure. It's also possible for you to rotate the structure using the mouse cursor. So similar to uh, the Uniprot, you also have different databases that provide such information. And one such is the NCBI database. So you could go to the Google and press NCBI database and such a window opens. And then you could select the structure if you're directly going and looking to the structure of the protein and press uh, uh, mention human amylase there and then press search button uh, to get some screen like this. And from here, you, can, you could select the human salivary amylase, the first one, and you could see the structure. It's also possible here also to rotate the structure and also there are many other information that you could apply uh, for the structure to be better viewed. And the other database is the PDB database or protein data bank with, uh, you could reach this in the Google by searching PDB directly or at www.rcsb.org. So once you go there, you could also search human MRIs there and in the search button, when you click, you get something like this and you could select human salivary MLIs and then uh, see the structure. So now we have discussed about the sequence and the structure. There are different databases available and where you could search for it. And also it is, there are several other databases like small databases or secondary databases we could call uh, like it's interesting that it, we could also make uh, the informatics or the uh, database to draw uh, the peptides for us. So if you if you go, one example is pepdraw.com. If you go to this website, uh, www.pepdraw.com and you give the amino acid sequences uh, that you want to draw the peptides for, uh, you could take this amino acid sequences from the Uniprot as we have mentioned earlier or from any other databases. So for example, now I'm taking few sequences from the Uniprot database. Then if I copy it and then I paste in pep draw and then press draw peptide, you can see the peptide structure drawn by the uh, website itself. So this was an extra information uh, to you besides the major databases. So similar to Peptro, there are many other secondary websites that also you could use uh, that would help you to uh, solve tasks like drawing peptides for you. And there are other big resources like the Human Protein Atlas, where you have information of more proteins and uh, different aspects of them, including the function, the interaction with other proteins. So all these you could also explore uh, as a part of this uh, course and you could uh, you could learn yourself what all extra information that you could get from uh, the a resource like this like human protein atlas so if you press amylase there and search you could get more information about this so uh, just to give you information uh, about the databases and to conclude uh, this there are huge amount of data for protein structures so it's very important to have a specific databases uh, uh, to fetch information. For example, many research groups or scientists are working on different projects and they will be finding new proteins or already established proteins. So they have to publish this somewhere 
so that the other people can also have the information about it. So databases act as a medium for this. And uh, databases are also necessary to have information arranged in a, uh, properly arranged. For example, there will be many duplicates, uh, same sequences supplied by many people. So all these, for all these, a database helps uh, to properly arrange the data. And such databases, as you have seen, help us to get the protein se sequence, the structure of protein. It also helps us to compare our result with the already published result that's available, match the protein sequence, and the secondary database and websites, like I mentioned, like the Human Protein Atlas and the Peptro like websites also help us to uh, do many other tasks associated with it. So just to uh, give uh, you an idea again, we will take one other example and try to do uh, it online. Uh, the fetching of data for protein sequence and protein structure. So here we will take an example of human hemoglobin protein. So I go to Google first, then I type uniprot. And as you see, the first search results comes as Uniprot, then you click Uniprot. And below find your protein, now we are looking for hemoglobin. And we press search. And you can see as the first result, you can see human hemoglobin with 147 amino acids. So you click the first entry here. And you can see the screen, as I just mentioned before, with all these options, starting from function uh, to similar proteins. So what we want is we have to get the sequence of hemoglobin protein. So we go to sequence here. So you can see the sequence here. You can either copy this like this and paste it wherever you want, like in a Word file or something, or it's also possible for you to download this by pressing the download button and you can save it. As I want to save it. Now to see the structure, you can click the structure. You could see the 3D structure of hemoglobin protein. There are different options below here where you could select the source and also the method by which the 3D structure is produced. And also you could move it in 3D direction using your mouse cursor. It's also possible for you to zoom to see the inner structure and the bonds that's formed between and the amino acids if you want. So all these options are available in Uniprot. So we would also uh, now uh, see the same protein by using uh, the PDB database, which I showed you. So we open a new window. We go to Google again. We press PDB database. And you see this as a first result. And you go here, then you type here again hemoglobin. So, so now we will search again for hemoglobin protein using the PDB database. So we open. Google again, then we type PDB database. And you can see as the first search result, you see the RCSB PDB. You click that and in the search button, you give hemoglobin. And you can see a different search results for this and you search down to get the hemoglobin protein 
and then you click this you can see human hemoglobin once you click this you can see the 3d structure here and also below just here you can click the structure again so that you see a full window with the structure so in pdb database again uh, as in the uniprot you can uh, rotate the 3d structure you can even zoom it and find the protein uh, sequences that's there uh, inside and the bonds if you want to see it closer and one thing about pdb uh, uh, an add-on an extra thing that you have in pdb is that you can also take a screenshot of the protein you can go here and you can see a screenshot button so when you click this it's able to take a picture of the uh, 3d structure and you could download it or copy it when you press download you can again give the Okay, and you could save it as an image. The NCBI so you have you can either go to the protein and search for hemoglobin. Or you could also, if you want the structure directly, you could go to the structure and also search for hemoglobin. So you could see different structures here, which has been reported by different uh, research groups. So if you click uh, the hemoglobin, and similar to the earlier one, we are able to see the structures here. So if you want to use the pep draw to draw the peptide for you, you can Google pep draw and you can open this. You see here, they are asking to enter the sequences for which you want to draw the peptide. So we could take some sequences of the hemoglobin protein now from uh, Uniprot. Just to show you so you go to the sequences from the uniprot for hemoglobin and you maybe take the first 10 or 15 amino acid and you copy and then you go to peptro and you paste it and you click draw peptide you can see the uh, peptide drawn by the PEPDRAW website. Also, as I said, to explore more, you can go to Human Protein Atlas. You can just type Human Protein Atlas in Google. And if you want more to be learned about hemoglobin, you could search here and you could get all the information regarding hemoglobin, uh, the different aspects of it, where it is more expressed, what, uh, what different tissues has it, and the structure of it, if you click it more, it can give you the more information regarding the structure and also the functions and where which cells uh, can uh, has been uh, reported with hemoglobin and many other things, including the literature are available, the research groups working on it. So it, it's up to you. You can explore more about such proteins by using uh, the big, a resource like human protein atlas so in this lecture now we have uh, clearly seen about how we uh, get the sequence and the structure of the proteins and which are the major databases that could be used and which are the other extra uh, resources like peptro or the human protein atlas or many other things that's available for you to explore more so uh, i hope the few uh, the other lectures after this will also give you more idea about getting the protein sequences and the structure. Thank you.